So hey, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, it's biology, and it's a guide, or just a bit of a lesson, towards platyhelminthes. You may be wondering, what are platyhelminthes? Well, if you saw the title, you'd know they were flatworms. Now you may think flatworms, no, that's not my interest, but they're actually kind of interesting. And you might want to know a bit about them because the most famous flatworm is the tapeworm. And you do not want to get one of those inside you. And if you want to know how to get rid of them, here, just watch my video. Important things to know about flatworms. They're, they're dorsoventrically flattened. They have bilateral symmetry. They have three germ layers, only three. Their body is soft and unsegmented. And, most, and more interestingly, 80% of all flatworms are parasitic. However, the turbellaria, I'll get into what that is in a second, are free moving there so let me explain what these are okay so the important thing to know is flatworms are a phylum that comes under subkingdom and that subkingdom is invertebrates things that have no backbone now that comes under the animal kingdom and there are five kingdoms that i, I won't go into that now in this lesson Anyways, so there are four classes of that, of this phylum, uh, which they are the Turbillaria, the Trematoda, the Monogenea, and the Cestoda. Let's start off with the Turbillaria. These are interesting. These are the non-parasitic ones, which mean they don't need a host to f live they can feed by themselves off plants or animals. So, let's see. So, the Turbillaria class includes all the free-moving non-parasitic flatworms. This class includes both terrestrial and aquatic forms. Um, and, yeah. Um, with, there are, they are carnivorous and have these hair-like projections called cilia. To move the anim to move that flatworm through the water, there are approximately four thousand five hundred species, and um, I'll show you some images now, as I am in the background. Okay, these are not to be worried about. They might be those weird things you find in the ocean once in a while, and sometimes on Earth. Anyways, the Trematoda. Now this is parasitic. The Trematoda class, commonly known as flukeworms, it's what they're called, is fully parasitic with an oral and a ventral sucker to attach to, a, to the host. Adult flukeworms inhabit the circulatory system with the liver. During the juvenile stages, which can be called the larval stages of the Trematoda, they initially inhabit mainly a mollusk, like a snail or slug, uh, octo squids count, but ma it's it's mainly like snails and slugs, for example, and that and also some shell um using cre mollusks. Well, sorry, yeah. Um, so then they may inhabit their primary host, which may be humans. Okay. The reproductive adults then lay eggs in the host and spread them through the host's feces. These eggs then become larvae. Uh, there are approxi approximately 20,000 trematoda species. So that's more worrying. Okay? So just remember, a bit, the main sign you know that you have uh, um, a tapeworm or or fat or more any of these parasites in your uh, in your intestines 
is through the feces that you'll find eggs mainly and if you if it dies or it get it, or you kill it it will come out in your feces not very nice but well it's life anyways next class the monogenia the monogenia class is microscopic and parasitic okay it used to be the, considered a subclass of the trematoda however it was discovered that they are ectoparasites meaning that they attach and feed off the outer epidermal layer the skin um furthermore they feed off one host in a lifetime monogenia meaning one generation one life etc um and mainly attached to fish some monogenians are egg laying oviparous and some are are live bearing so viviparous and so there are approximately 5000 species okay so the monogenia are not so uh, to so much to be worried about but yeah now the one i'm about to get into now is the one that causes a lot of worries uh and is definitely the most disgusting one in my opinion okay the cestoda class the cestoda class is fully parasitic and is commonly known as a tapeworm yes the cestoda are tapeworms many cestoda species are infectious to humans and can grow up to 18 meters you wouldn't want that in your intestines 18 if you think about it 18 meters is longer than your uh than your longer intestine which is about 11 meters i believe um okay they do not have a mouth or a digestive cavity as they inhabit the intestines of the vertebrate host and absorb nutrients from the already digested food so basically they enter your intestines and the feces that's um the food that's becoming feces th- that are going through your intestines while well, the tapeworm s- absorbs nutrients from it so basically and that's why when it lays eggs they're going to go into the feces and that's how you know anyways um tapeworms do not seek hosts okay they infect hosts by getting ingested eaten in another host or egg however they have many intermediate hosts throughout their lifetime okay so they go through many and then if that one gets eaten or it lays an egg and someone ing- ingests eats that egg they consume the tapeworm and that's how the tapeworms go into hosts okay uh what possessing the same organ systems as other flatworms platy platyomentes tapeworms have a complex reproductive system with thousands of these things called proglottids proglottids behind their neck structure it's they don't have a neck but it it's supposedly where their neck would be if you're comparing it to a human vertebrate um body um so they have thousands of these things behind their neck structure which have both male and female reproductive organs these proglottids can produce up to a thousand eggs each that means one tapeworm alone can make a million eggs up to a million eggs in your intestines that's not nice anyways tapeworms also have a scolex which is this thing which consists of several hooks and suckers to latch onto the intestine wall so these things just bite on and that's how they stick to it to the intestine there are pro- approximately 6000 different species of um tapeworms now just something all this information that i'm getting is of now if this if maybe in 5 years or so there may be much more species discovered or there there might be a new class discovered about the um the uh platyomintes 
uh, film. But uh, of now, this information is correct. And I'd just like to um, also point out that if you're curious, uh, if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to answer them in maybe another episode of or video of this, I guess, biology. And, um, of course, please leave a like or, and subscribe. It would really help me out and it would make me really happy. I make a variety of homemade videos about what I'm passionate about. Passionate about and it really does make a difference if you subscribe or, or leave a like and comment. Um, thank you for watching. And, yes, um, I hope you enjoyed and found this useful.